Okay, so in my previous video on monetary policy, I didn't get to look at how the MPC actually makes decisions whether to tighten interest rate or loosen interest rates. So um, let's look at some of the factors, and there are many. And they look at statistics from, you know, many different sources like the Office for National Statistics, etc. So firstly, they look at unemployment, because unemployment, if there is too much of it or increasing number in an economy, it can lead to the spiral of decline. Decline. Like we have seen when um, when all the all the manufacturing firms were closing down and getting cheaper labor abroad, you know many places like you know the Docklands they they shut down. They became derelict because you know there was so much unemployment. People were spending less, and that was affecting businesses. And you know it goes on and on and on. So according to that, they will alter interest rates to encourage either more employment or just to or keep it where it is if it's all right. Because one of the macroeconomic objectives of the government is to keep full employment. So they will never try to decrease it. They'll try to either push it or maintain it. Sales of exports are also important because the number of, um, you know, how much uh, we export, if we export more, then our aggregate demand will increase. And if we export less, then our aggregate demand is probably uh, likely to um, decrease as well and exports are important because we're a country with a trade deficit so we're always trying to welcome it and encourage it so according to figures of sales of exports you know it's not the main factor that's on the NPC's mind but they will alter interest rates either to help firms or either to maybe not help firms because they don't need it and it's doing fine the economy they also look at the government um, spending plans, so in the budget, uh, which is done uh, annually. So they look at that because they will, they will, they can predict that if the government spends um, money and is spending a lot of money, then that can lead to a negative multiply effect. Our good demand keeps on increasing, price level keeps on increasing, and they can't have interest rates going up so much. So, you know, they might keep interest rates high to maintain that even though the government spending um, is causing our good uh, demand to increase so much, but it's doing it in a controlled way, and it's not interest rates are not going too high. The wage rate also affects because we didn't talk about um in the previous one interest rates affecting uh, aggregate supply it does affect aggregate supply but if the wage rates are uh, like if minimum wage is too high then firms will recruit less and uh, less people and that will cause aggregate to, um, supply to probably decrease so according to where aggregate supply is they will set interest rates to help firms out you know to help people out because Aggregate demand can keep on increasing and giving us um, economic growth, but it can only do it till a certain level because, you know, it will reach the full employment part of the curve, the vertical bit, where there is no more economic growth. You need aggregate to, um, supply to shift so that aggregate demand can make its way up that as well. So they both work like hand in hand kind of thing. They also look at um, statistics from surveys which measure business and consumer um, confidence because one thing is there it's all well and putting let's say interest rate to 0.5 percent encouraging people you know have a greater disposable income spend the money it's all well doing that but if the consumers are you know they're not they don't have the confidence in the economy to do it, then they won't. They probably invest somewhere else, and that's the same for businesses. You know, they're likely to invest somewhere else. They gotta have the confidence and the trust in the economy to, you know, make these investments in it. And when I say investments in the economy, that even means buying goods or services from the economy. <coughs> the cost of um, of raw materials also they have to look at because. If oil prices increase, then that means firm. Um, that means for firms, their domestic costs will rise. That means they'll probably produce less, higher prices. That will probably cause aggregate supply to shift um, uh, to decrease. And if aggregate supply decreases, then this can cause um, cost push inflation. So. As we mentioned before, inflation is one of the key things that the MPC looks at. So it will also do a bit of speculation that, you know, what is to happen to oil prices? Are they going to go up? Are they going to go down? What's going to happen? What, what are the predictions of the AS um, curve? What, what will happen? And according to that, they can set interest rate maybe a bit in advance so that at the time it's not like a big shock and they have to do emergency action. 
There's also asset prices. Now, house prices fluctuate quite a bit, well, not as much as oil prices, but they do. And basically, this links to the wealth effect because if house prices are high then you know people are going to think wow my house is worth more and they'll go out shop more because they feel more richer this is called a wealth effect so if they realize that this is going to have a big effect on let's say consumption and it can cause the economy to overheat what they might do is they might put interest rates higher so that you know even when they are um, even if their houses go up in price what will happen is they know that they won't find a good buyer or something if they wanted to because interest rates are high and less people are going to be looking to buy houses but the problem with all this is is done through modeling prediction speculation and also according to these statistics it's hard to get the effect the the magnitude of the effects that are going on and the magnitude that they should change the interest rates by so it's not a you know foolproof method and it does have its disadvantages but those are the amount like there's many more statistics that NPC look at but those are like the main ones they look at and they have to analyze and from that they have to make a balanced decision thank you for watching please visit my blog